Hi, welcome to my today's classroom. In my today's class, I will be discussing about Butt Chiari syndrome. Now, what is this Butt Chiari syndrome? Butt Chiari syndrome is hepatic vein thrombosis. This is known as Butt Butt Chiari syndrome. Now, whenever a patient of Butt Chiari syndrome presents to a physician, he will present with dull aching type of pain in right hypochondrium. This pain may be sustained and it is not so severe. Together with this dull aching type of pain, patient may develop ascites and ascites may cause abdominal distension. Now in this butt carry syndrome, as there is hepatic vein thrombosis, these patients may present with jaundice, but this jaundice is of mild grade. Apart from this, these patients may present with hepatic encephalopathy and upper GI bleeding from varices because this portal vein thrombosis may cause portal hypertension. But this variceal bleeding and hepatic encephalopathy is not so common in butt Chiari syndrome. It is only seen in 5 to 10% of cases. So whenever these patients they present with right hypochondrial pain, mild jaundice, in hepatic encephalopathy or variceal bleeding though rare then one must keep possibility of butt Chiari syndrome though there are many other causes which can present like this so if you are thinking on lines of butt Chiari syndrome you will have to inquire about ingestion of oral contraceptives for a long time if patient is female because these oral contraceptives if taken for a long time they can cause hypercoagulable state and because of this hypercoagulable state patient may develop hepatic vein thrombosis apart from this steering injury any accident a stab injury this can also lead to hepatic vein thrombosis myeloproliferative disorders like leukemias can cause hepatic vein thrombosis even polycythemia vera can cause hepatic vein thrombosis in these all conditions there is hypercoagulable state and because of this patient develops hepatic vein thrombosis so always rule out any intake of oral contraceptives for a long time steering wheel injury and any history of stab injury or abdominal surgery in past these conditions may lead to hepatic vein thrombosis even radiotherapy of abdomen can cause hepatic vein thrombosis bone marrow transplantation is can cause hepatic vein thrombosis so any history of bone marrow transplantation if it is there then it can cause hepatic vein thrombosis one of the cause of hepatic vein thrombosis is hepatic transplantation as this is one of the complication of hepatic transplantation so rule out all these causes from history then you can reach a perfect diagnosis so whenever a patient is presenting with all these features and once you have ruled out hepatic vein thrombosis or butt carry syndrome then only you move to other uh, other causes that is other possibilities other possibilities in differential diagnosis so i mean to say what are the different differential diagnosis of this butt carry syndrome that means disorders which can present just like this butt carry syndrome one is veno occlusive disease of liver that is veno hepatic veno occlusive diseases with hepatic veno occlusive diseases in which small hepatic veins are obstructed may present in the similar way so you will have to rule out hepatic vein venous venous dis, dis, diseases in which small hepatic veins veno veins are uh, are involved so in this veno occlusive diseases these are usually seen in connective tissue disorders if there is associated connective tissue disorder or if patient has been subjected to bone marrow transfusion then in these cases also you may get this veno occlusive diseases veno occlusive diseases may also occur in myeloproliferative disorders so causes are almost similar in veno occlusive diseases and in hepatic vein thrombosis but how to differentiate it from butt carry syndrome you will have to differentiate the two that is veno occlusive disease and butt carry syndrome 
In Bhatkari syndrome, the larger veins, hepatic veins, that is, which are draining the right and left lobe of liver and vein of caudate, caudate lobe of liver, if these are involved, that is Bhatkari syndrome. And if smaller veins are affected, that is veno-occlusive disease. So in cases of Bhatkari syndrome, usually the caudate lobe is spared the vein which is supplying caudate which is draining the caudate lobe that is spared as a result of which clinically when you examine the patient the caudate lobe is enlarged because this is because of hypertrophy of caudate lobe the right and left hepatic vein that is obstructed in butt carry syndrome and the vein which is separately coming from behind and supplying caudate lobe that is patent usually in this butt carry syndrome as a result of which there is hypertrophy of caudate lobe. But in cases of veno-occlusive diseases in which small veins are affected, in, in that case uh, the caudate lobe is normal. Only the liver, liver architecture is lost. There is fibrosis in liver and later on there, there is development of cirrhosis. The development of cirrhosis in cases of butt carry syndrome that incidence is less but in case of veno occlusive diseases the incidence is more so later on in veno occlusive diseases cirrhosis may develop so in cases of butt carry syndrome caudate lobe is palpable while in cases of veno occlusive disease caudate lobe is not palpable overall there is gradual shrinking of the of the liver in cases of veno occlusive disease and veno occlusive diseases are usually associated with connective tissue disorders, autoimmune disorders. So you will have to trace autoimmune disorders in the history. Another differential diagnosis in butt care with butt carry syndrome is right-sided heart failure, congestive cardiac failure. In right-sided heart failure also, there is congestion of liver and Features sometimes simulate butt carry syndrome. There may be a dull aching type of pain in right hypochondrium in case of but in case of a right ventricular failure, congestive cardiac failure. But in these cases, in, in the cases of congestive cardiac failure, right vent, right heart right sided heart failure, the veins are neck veins are engorged, liver is palpable, and there is edema. There may be mild degree of ascites also. So, in these cases, you will have to differentiate it from differentiate this right right sided heart failure from butt carry syndrome. Right sided heart right sided heart failure is associated with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So you will get features of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in history. While in butt carry syndrome, you will not get such type of history. If there is some rheumatic valvular heart disease, severe mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation or tricuspid stenosis. In these cases also there is right ventricular failure and so you will get these features of valvular heart disease in the history. So one by one you will have to differentiate it from butt carry syndrome. So again I will repeat that to differentiate in differential diagnosis of butt carry syndrome you will keep First possibility of veno-occlusive disease of liver. Number two, you will keep possibility of right ventricular, right-sided heart failure, congestive cardiac failure. You will have to rule out mitral stenosis, rheumatic mitral stenosis, rheumatic tricuspid stenosis, and right-sided valvular heart diseases. Apart from this, myocarditis, dilated cardiomyopathy, these all come in the differential diagnosis of butt carry syndrome. So one by one from history, you will have to rule out each of the cardiac cause to differentiate the hepatic congestion because of heart and to differentiate it from hepatic vein thrombosis. Now in order to diagnose a case of butt carry syndrome, you will have to do color Doppler study of hepatic vein. In color Doppler study, you can demonstrate venous thrombosis, hepatic venous thrombosis in both right and left branches of hepatic vein. Apart from this, 
in ultrasound of abdomen there is collection of fluid in peritoneal cavity another study is magnetic resonance angiography of hepatic vein that can also demonstrate hepatic vein thrombosis apart from this other in other diagnostic studies you can do liver biopsy in liver biopsy there is central lobular fibrosis and there is hypertrophy of wall of hepatic vein so these are the procedures by which you can diagnose but chiari syndrome apart from this supportive investigations in order to rule out the cause like hematological disorders you will have to do hematological studies to rule out myeloproliferative proliferative disorders you will have to rule out disorders which produce defect in coagulation like uh, like protein c deficiency antithrombin 3 deficiency in these conditions also there is hepatic vein thrombosis so you will have to do hematological studies now if you are suspecting but chiari syndrome how to treat these patients usually prognosis of but chiari syndrome is not good prognosis is relatively poor so the treatment is symptomatic you can try with streptokinase you can try with tpa tissue plasminogen activator though they are effective in the early phase so usually the treatment is supportive and with the help of treatment also prognosis is not so good thank you